Thanks everyone. Thanks for coming to the first uh, Music Tech Meetup. Thanks Soup for making this happen. I've been Yay. wanting to do this for the longest time, but I, I, I was... <laughs> this, is, this is really fun because this is something that I really enjoy doing and this has been a, a, a passion and a hobby. And I'm even more excited that Jerry was here as someone who's sort of taught me all those DSP basics a few years ago and I've sort of learned a lot of the stuff along the way. So today I want to talk about something that I've been playing with for the last couple of years. Uh, it's something called web audio. So a little bit more on the questions that Jerry asked earlier. How many here play, have worked or played with web technologies? JavaScript, HTML? All right, cool. So this is very easy to sell to you guys because we just saw sort of how things are done in the C++ world and I'm, I'm going to give you a, a, a sneak peek at how things can work uh, in the web world which uh, you know, by the nature of how it is, it's slightly, slightly simpler. So this is my talk, uh, web audio. I, I should change that, it's not emerging anymore. It's kind of, it's kind of out there already, it's, it's kind of standard. But I should, I should really... <laughs> Really, everybody knows that you know all, all this is about making random noises uh, and uh, just having fun. Uh, so, a quick thing about me: I work with audio technologies. Uh, I used to work a lot more with you know, the media side of things. Uh, I don't do that anymore. Uh, I also host a podcast uh, about local sort of development, like dev community engineers, and just interviewing really interesting people in Singapore. And I also make a ton of trouble at local meetups. I host a couple called one called Papers We Love, where we uh, take ac academic papers and share and explain them to uh, each other so that you know, we all get to learn. But that's, that's enough about me. What I want to talk about is web audio and what is web audio, uh, why web audio matters and why I, it's something that you know, people who are interested in audio technology should at least know about or at least play with it a little bit and how, a, a very quick overview of how you can use web audio. So starting with what? This is the problem with, you know, I thought it was mine. <laughs> uh, really good, um, you know, ringtone design by Google there. Um, so what is Web Audio? Web Audio is a browser API. So this stuff works in your web browser. So, um, you know, your Firefox, your Chrome, your whatever browser you use, uh, this stuff works inside that. So it's all done inside your browser. Um, if you've heard of the term HTML5, so this is one of the HTML5 is more like a family of APIs. There's a bunch of things you can do with HTML5. You can do Canvas and VR and all these things. One of the things you can do with HTML5 is web audio. So it lets you generate, synthesize, manipulate, create sounds in a browser. Um, so a little bit of history of how sort of this came about. Uh, if anybody's been playing with web technologies for many years, you might find some of this, uh, you know, sort of, you might remember some of these things. Back in a long time ago, there was something called BG Sound in Internet Explorer. This was like background sound, you know, this was the, the time when websites, you load them and you have this like really crappy MIDI audio playing. That's what they used. It was a, it was a tag in HTML called BG Sound that you could, uh, you know, put it in, put a, put a, a, a MIDI file and it would just play that. Um, <laughs> no, this was, this was created by Microsoft. Netscape probably stole it, as always. Um, <laughs> then there was the, the time of Flash. Uh, I'm sure you guys remember Flash audio. This was, you know, this was really like where things were. And, and you put them in using these object and embed tags, right? I'm going to show you a Flash. Unfortunately, my browser blocks it nowadays because, you know, Flash is not cool anymore. But yeah, this is a Flash video, uh, audio file. And, Yeah, now you know why they block it, right? It's, it's, anyway, it's not really something that a lot of browsers like to support these days. Um, and then there was sort of something that came along which is more of a standard, which is more something that was accepted by the, the W3C consortium and all the browsers were sort of behind it. And it was called the audio tag. So this works across all browsers. It's been working for many, many years. And it sort of gives you a small little player that, you know, you put an audio file inside the source attribute and just play something. Yeah, and it works. Uh, it, it lets me change things quite easily anyway. Um, so then um, Mozilla came up with something called the Audio Data API. Uh, so this was um, something that they were trying to do because they felt the audio tag wasn't good enough to be able to manipulate things. You could change the volume, you could change how fast and slow you you, you change the speed of uh, how fast or slow you play the sound, 
but he couldn't change things like filtering. He couldn't filter things, couldn't really do much. So Firefox came up with the audio data API that gave you sort of, kind of like what Jerry was showing, very low level signal processing kind of access to the, to the audio file. And so you could you know, play the samples, change things around. That was really fun, except um, no other browser actually liked it. So they were like, this is too low level, you, couldn't, you can't do things. Uh, you, you, you're gonna have to make everybody sort of a low level programmer to be able to use this. And it was against the ethos of the web, which preferred to give people more higher level APIs so they could uh, use things around. So finally, everybody got together, uh, W3C blessed this, and the Web Audio API was born. So this is sort of finally certified uh, mid last year. So that was finally when the, their, the, the, the API was considered like it's acceptable, and uh, most of the major brothers support it. So the main philosophy behind the API is it allows you to do mixing, processing, and filtering, very similar to what we sh saw Jerry show earlier, within your browser. So you can think of it as doing something like this, and this, and this. You know, you, you just need the sound, right? You can use a boing. So all of these things could be done just within your browser. And surprisingly, uh, all browsers today support it. I should change the IE logo. It's not IE anymore. It's Edge. IE doesn't support it still, but uh, the new Microsoft browser Edge actually supports it pretty well. Um, a quick aside, so all of these web standards are published as a spec, uh, and you can go read them. Uh, so actually, it's on GitHub. It's an open website. You can go read it. And you can figure out how, what is the standard spec for all these things. This is how you can you, you write the code. All this stuff is documented really, really well and explained. Uh, this is what uh, people like Microsoft or, or Firefox, Chrome teams would use to implement internally how they work. And the cool thing is the entire process of creating this is also completely open. So if you're ever curious of how that works, uh, you can actually go follow it. And it's really fun to see people sort of you know, arguing about different algorithms and how should things should work and you know, whether they should, what kind of features they should uh, expose in the API. Um, and just for those people who play with the web uh, and you're not sure how well it's supported, uh, except for IE, we don't talk about IE anyway, uh, it's pretty, pretty well supported. Um, it's supported in quite uh, a few versions of Chrome and Firefox. Uh, Edge supports it since the first beta, I think. Uh, it's also supported on the mobile browsers, so you can actually do all the stuff that I'm showing on a mobile browser, no change of code, just, it just works. What about Node? Node.js? So Node.js is not technically JavaScript, in the sense that it's not in the browser. Or, okay, I should, I should put it that way around. Web Audio is a browser API, not a JavaScript API. So it's supported in the browser, not in the language. So you, there are some modules that are, people are trying to implement it in Node.js, but it's not the same because there's a significant amount, as you'll see, there's a significant amount of really high level APIs that this provides, which would be a sizable work to implement in Node.js. So what can you do with web audio? Uh, you can make musical instruments, you can make games, you can make immersive interactive experiences, uh, you can do communication and recording, and you can make digital audio workstation like production software uh, so I'll give some examples of some of these as we go along. Uh, but first I want to talk about why do you want to do this on the web. And I think that's three really, really cool things that the web as a platform provides you to do, to write your ad audio applications on a web platform. And the first thing is distribution. Um, and the fact that it's cross-platform. I mean, you can write it once and literally run it everywhere. Uh, also, the super cool ability of being able to share your application by just giving a URL, right? Um, this was a app, I hope it works, that was made by um, one of my mentors and a professor at NUS. And it's just, a it's just a synthesis engine that makes all sorts of weird sounds. But the cool thing that I want to show, it's probably a bit hard to show, is I can make sounds with this. So let's play this. Gonna work. No, it's on. Ah, it might. No, it really? might be broken. <laughs> Let me try again. No. Okay. Uh, anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, the, other, the other demo should work. The, the, the point I wanted to show you was, look at this URL, right? It actually has things like, this is a model called Rexter. The rev 
value is this, the badness value is this, and the gain is this. I could send this to someone else and you'll hear the exact same sound that I was hearing. The ability to share this kind of sort of real, really specific things just by using a URL, and everybody knows how to click a URL, is something that is kind of hard to do in other platforms because of the entire like, sh like URL basedness of the web. Um, collaboration. So the other cool thing about being online is, well, you're online, you're connected to other people. Uh, so you can connect with other people. Uh, there's a bunch of things that you can do um, where you can collaborate. So BandLab, which is what Jerry was talking about, has a feature where you can collaborate with other musicians. And you can play your instrument, they can play their instrument, and you can sort of jam together. The lag is a little, there's a little bit of lag, but it's not something that you can't work around by coming up with different ways of sort of, you know, you record first and you, you pass to someone else and they can come and record. But there are different ways to go around it, but the point is it's so simple because you are automatically connected to, you know, everybody else. And with stuff like WebSockets, this is super simple to just collaborate and work with each other. And I also feel that web being a platform that's inherently so visual, you know, there's a DOM, there's Canvas, there is uh, WebGL, all these things make it so easy to add some kind of interaction or some kind of visuals to your audio without really spending a lot of work or, or learning a whole new graphical framework. Uh, stuff exists, there's a bunch of libraries, just put it in and it works. So for a demo for that, um, this is this, this super old thing that we made at one of the companies I used to work for. <laughs> So you can see that just being able to add interactions and sounds and, and, and visuals and all to work together is really simple. You don't really have to do much work because all these pieces already exist on the web. Um, so that was sort of why I think it's a really cool platform to experiment, to play with, to make your apps uh, and to do something super fun. So let's get on to a little bit more technical side. Let's look at how you can actually write some code uh, in web audio uh, and how it actually would work. Um, so the entire sort of way you think about web audio is this what they call the graph routing paradigm. So you have some source, some kind of an audio file or some kind of something that generates audio that's connected to something else. And usually the last thing that's connected to is called a is often called a destination, and that's like the loudspeaker where the audio comes out. So you can have you know a loud uh, uh, um, a sound file that's connected to some kind of a, a filter that's connected to the output destination that goes out to the loudspeaker. So that's how you sort of build up the entire chain, as it's called, or, or, or a routing graph. Unfortunately, you don't do this using any kind of a visual programming language. This is JavaScript, so you <coughs> kind of write code, and you can say, take this connected to this, take this connected to this, and that connected to the output. So I'll go through the code in a little bit, but this is a simple way. You could have a much more complex graph and start getting more interesting sounds out of it. So you can have all sorts of weird configurations uh, with different kinds of filters, uh, and different kinds of effects. Uh, the API is pure JavaScript, uh, nothing special. So uh, if you're used to writing JavaScript, or if you're used to writing any C style language, it's very, very simple. One of the simplest languages, I think, to pick up. And the cool thing is everybody, come, everybody has uh, you know, a, a development platform built in. Every browser run, can run this. So you just open up your browser, open the developer tools, copy paste this in, it should just make some sounds. Can you show me? Sure. No. Here. Let's try. So this is, I'm making an audio context. I'm making an oscillator and a filter. Oh. Sorry, for, for those who can't see this, my code is broken. Can you see this now? <laughs> Alright, so I made an oscillator, I made a filter. I'm going to connect the two together. It's going to probably sound really bad because it's going to sound like a, you know. But you get the point. Right, sorry for the mic. 
It sounds exactly like what it is. Right? Just, uh, maybe five less lines of code. Um, but here, again, um, the interesting thing to realize is while you get this super nice, super clean, very simple JavaScript API, the actual implementation, it's kind of hard to see. This is from the source code of Chrome browser. So you can, Chrome is open source, so you can actually go look inside. It's actually C++. This is very similar to what Jerry did. I'm pretty sure if I go dig in, I'm, I'll find one place which is exactly like what he was doing. There's not much difference to how some of the sound is actually generated. It's just you have this high-level API that makes life simpler for you. Um, so like we were talking about earlier, it's all about routing and connecting these nodes together. So what kind of nodes does Web Audio provide by default? Provides uh, a bunch of types of nodes. So uh, the first type, I, I like to call them as sources. So it's uh, things like oscillator, these generate audio of some kind, right? So it's an oscillator which generates a sine tone, like what we just heard. So I, I was using an oscillator. There's an audio buffer source, as it's called. It's a very heavy name, but uh, it basically just means an audio file. So I can take an audio file, load it into this, and it just plays back the audio file. It can be anything. It can be a Rick Astley song, like we had earlier, or it could just be a, 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 a flute playing a small little piece, or it could be even a smaller part of sound. It doesn't matter. Take an audio file, put it into this, and it just plays back. Uh, these two are a little bit more sort of advanced. These are you. This is used to take audio from a video tag. So let's say you have a video tag and you want to take uh, the, the output of the video tag and you know, change the voice of you know, the person to Darth Vader or something. Uh, you could do all that using this, so you can get in the audio from something else and, and, and sort of uh, process it. And this is for you to send an audio out over something like WebRTC to another person, if you're doing voice conferencing. So these are sort of the ways to generate audio. Oh, I'm sorry, this was not to send out, this was to get in audio from some third party. So these are all inputs. Like this is how you get sound, this is how you create sound. Uh, then you effect it. So you can change, you can have a gain node which changes the volume of the sound, a biquad filter, which is what Jerry was showing earlier. So it's a filter, you can do low pass, high pass, all this, this, that stuff. You can add a delay if you want to add some, uh, so, some sort of a echo kind of, you know, to your, to your audio, to your song. You can have, you can do some analysis. You can pan uh, in stereo, so you can do left-right panning. You can do a 3D panning, so it's what we were talking about earlier with this uh, spatial stuff with VR. So there's already a, a pre-implemented node that does all the head-related transfer function stuff, although it's kind of, it's kind of weak because it assumes a single head-related transfer functions. Normally, head-related transfer functions are personalized, um, but this kind of assumes a single one. But it still does quite a decent job of, of doing 3D audio. Uh, a convolver node lets you do all sorts of really interesting reverberation processing. Uh, there's a wave shaper and a dynamics compressor for doing distortion. So you really get a lot of free pre-built effects. Uh, and, and this stuff sort of is all optimized and pre-implemented in super you know, fast code in C++ for you in your browser. So you don't really have to Reinve uh, reinvent any of these things. And of course, finally, now you have gotten the audio, you have processed it, you've got to push it out somewhere. So the most common one is destination, which is you know, your loudspeaker. Um, there's something called offline destination that lets you sort of uh, run something and record it to a buffer and then either save it as a file or use it again as something else. It's called a pre-render. And then uh, media stream audio destination, this is like I was talking about if you're doing peer-to-peer -peer communications or anywhere you want to send audio to someone else on another computer or another machine, uh, you can use this to, to do that. Um, the way you connect nodes is using something called the dot connect method. So here you see you make a new context, you make a, take a buffer, and you connect the buffer to the destination. So you have a buffer that's going to get to the destination. So if I play this, this is basically going to take in whatever audio file that I passed to this buffer. It's going to play it up. So this is the kind of vague idea that you, you can see that this is, the, this is how connections work. You just take something, you connect it to the output, and, and, and you play it, and stuff just plays out. Of course, that was a very simple graph. You can have much more complicated graph. And if you, if you look at this specific application, which is a vocoder, uh, this is like one-tenth of all the node connections there are. So there's like hundreds of nodes being made and created and connected and, and, and removed at the same time in a more complex application. Does Chrome have a kind of automatic graph generation? I'll, I'll get to that. No, it doesn't. Firefox does, but um, yeah. 
Uh, let me talk about a couple of other things. Um, I think I missed out. Yeah, so there's something called parameters. So, you know, you saw that we had something called a bipod filter or we have filters and effects and gain and all of these things. But how do you change things, right? How do you change the gain? You want to make the audio softer at this part, louder at that part. You want to change the filter from this frequency. So every of these nodes expose something called parameters that you can change. Um, so you can see in filter, there is something called filter frequency and it has a, a property called that value that you can set. So now the filter is going to start filtering off at 400 hertz. Uh, you can set the Q value, the gain, the oscillator also has frequency, um, the gain has a gain, the buffer has a playback rate, so every node exposes a bunch of properties and a bunch of parameters that you can change and tweak and, and, and you can change it real time. So you're able to basically use that to, to control and change your audio as you go. So stuff like making envelopes and making uh, you know, panning and all these things can become uh, quite straightforward just changing these values. So I'll choose a couple of examples. Um, one is um, something of something called parameter automation. So it lets you automatically change these parameters. You don't want to ch keep changing them manually. So um, here is something uh, that's very commonly used in music, very low level music production called uh, amplitude modulation. Um, you'll hear it. it's probably going to be really loud. So I apologize if it is. It's really, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'll try to figure out how to, oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna change my audio to my loud, internal speaker so it's not gonna be so loud, but um, if you guys can't hear it at the back, please come and sit in front, there's a lot of space in front. Can you hear it at the back? So you can, so what this is doing is it has two oscillators and one os oscillator is modulating the other oscillator and you can change its values using... How, how much longer is it going to be? I have some... Good no, it's fine. It's, it's, okay. it's all right. It's, okay. not, it's also not very complicated sounds. Okay. It's just going to be right. this kind of stuff. Uh, so you can do these kind of things and have graphs where one node modulates another mode and, uh, node and you can do all sorts of automation. All this is pre-built again, so you don't have to sit and change a lot of these small things. Uh, you can even connect nodes to parameters, so this is a bit more complicated stuff. So you can have an oscillator changing the frequency of another oscillator. So that's, that's going to sound um, more like a frequency modulation as it's called. So. so this sounds really weird and, and like you'll see what's the point in all of these things. But um, you know, and, and this is something that I, when I was making this presentation, <laughs> Why everything so low level? You know, where where do I get to make my Rick Astley songs, right? <laughs> Why is everything so so? You know, even, like Jerry talked about stuff in C++ where you're changing, you know, individual samples and multiplying them, and I'm talking about connecting nodes. But where, you know, how do I make music? Where is my where is my songwriting? Where is so? I think if anybody has ever done any coding, you remember that the first thing you did was this, right? You did print up Hello World, uh, and and then you saw Hello World. And, and, and this is again very, very different than stuff like what PayPal does or stuff like you know, what your DAWs do or all applications started off at some point here and this is sort of the basics. Similarly, if you ever wrote any visual code, you started off by drawing a black square. This is, this is the standard thing you do, you draw a white square, a black square, a red square, whatever, and then you sort of build up from there. So same, similarly with web audio, you get all these really low level basic handles on things they're much higher than sort of, I would say, like what you do in, you know, more like C++ kind of stuff. But still, they're low enough that you don't really see the, dif the, the direct application of that to, you know, your next music project. But, if you, but that's where stuff like libraries come in, right? Because people have sort of taken these things, bundled them up, made some really, really cool things that you can just drop in place uh, and start using it. So I'm going to talk about a few libraries that are super cool. Uh, it's something called Tone.js, um, very widely used web audio library for doing um, basic sort of musical stuff. So if you want to do, if you want to have your scales, if you want to have a small synthesizer that you know you sequence some notes and it plays through, um, you give you give it a bunch of samples and it, it sequences them. All that uh, this library does it for you, and you don't have to deal with any of this note connection stuff. It's a very simple uh, API and it's very well maintained. So you could look at that. This is something that I made in the, one of the previous uh, places I used to work. 
Uh, this is more for interactive things. So if you want to have something where, you know, like what we're looking at the, the alien moving around, and, and as you move around, it changes the sound. Uh, this stuff, this would help you, does a lot of, has a lot of functionality to let you do that very quickly. Um, There's something called Babylon.js if you want to make games. Uh, Babylon.js is great for uh, using, sort of, um, adding sounds to games. So it does things like, oh, whenever there's a, there's a collision, play this audio file. So all these sort of things where, where you need them in a specific way, uh, all these frameworks and all these libraries that already exist help, them do, uh, help you do that in that specific uh, way. Um, there's a list of, um, this is kind of a plug, there's a list of, that I maintain of all uh, super cool libraries uh, and, and frameworks and, and just awesome apps on web audio. Uh, that, that you can just go and look, and if you find something new, you can just you add a new one in, it's open source, so you can just uh, play with it. There's also a bunch of tools, and Cedric, you asked for this. Uh, Firefox has this thing called the Web Audio Inspector. Uh, if you use Firefox, you download something called the Firefox Developer Edition, and this comes in. So you take any uh, audio, web audio web page, and just open the inspector and say, it, there's a tab called Web Audio and it just shows you the graph of what you have already coded. So if you have written some code and you want to check if it, whether that works, uh, this thing helps you do that quite easily. Um, there's another cool thing. Uh, this is a website. Um, it's called Canopy. And I think I have this running, so I'll try to see if it works. So this is uh, some code that somebody wrote that does something similar to what I did earlier. Just, some, just make some sound. I'll see if this is probably not going to kill everybody's ears. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just a simple wave. Uh, but then this also has this thing where it shows you the graph. So you can write your code at the bottom, and it shows you what, the, what is the code that you, what is the, the graph that you generated based on the code. It also shows you what is the audio that's coming out of it. So it's super handy for debugging and playing with this stuff. Um, there's something called Recorder.js, which lets you plug in web audio to another browser feature, which lets you record stuff from a microphone. So this lets you do stuff like, you know, speech, rec speech recording, or you want to change the voice of someone. So RecorderJS is a really nice library for doing that. Um, and for the last bit, I'm going to show you a few wacky, cool, crazy things that people have built with web audio. Uh, and the first, of course, you have to start with the Acid Machine, because, just because. Okay, I'm going to turn off the big audio for this, because otherwise it's just going to annoy everyone. All right, let's play. Can you guys hear it? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah this would have been nice with the last speaker, so it's fine. Uh, I, 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 the, the links are there. I'll, I'll share the link to the talk. You can go listen to it. And, and you can, you know, this is just all done for you, and it's just all completely synthesized in the browser. Um, the next one is very different. Uh, this was an art project by some people who. Uh, uh, who had a, 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 a access to this large repository of bird sounds from all over the world. So they, they built this app. So unfortunately, a part of it is broken. What it's supposed to do is supposed to find my location and make, um, and so it shouldn't say Paris, it should say Singapore, but that, that bit's broken. But it makes a soundscape uh, from these recordings from all these different sounds. Uh, and yeah, I think this might, this might be fine. <laughs> Yes. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, this is supposed to be like what person? Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is another favorite one. It takes a bunch of audio code and uh, there's a bunch of software code. <laughs> Sorry. It takes a bunch of code and, and synthesizes it based on some metrics. So, so it's trying to see what it sounds like. So this is H some HTML that I found somewhere and it's just trying to synthesize it. Actually, this is the HTML of my slideshow, so this is very meta. <laughs> my slideshow is playing itself. I don't know, it's weird. Oh, I can change. Um, I can change all these things. So 
they, they kind of cheat because they're using, you know, some kind of a scale and then they're just mapping around it. So it's always going to sound musical, uh, regardless of what you do, because you're mapping it onto a musical scale. But um, is it based on tags? Or is it... Yeah, I, I think it's just based on text. Yeah. You're just taking some text and doing some hashing or something. Oh, it's not like the HTML tags. It's actually no. I it's just it's just I think it's just text based. You can give it any code. It doesn't have to be HTML. You can give it uh, C code, Swift code, whatever. You can just give it a bunch of text and it'll just generate something. It's um, <laughs> it is. It's awesome. It's fun. This is this is the best thing about it. You get all these super crazy, wacky things. That is, of course, Game of Life. But uh, oh, this probably might sound better with um, loudspeakers. Let's try that. And uh, this last one is something that I built as a demo for showing off some stuff. Uh, and this is a couple of strong uh, synthesis algorithms. So this is a famous algorithm uh, for synthesizing string instruments. So there's a JavaScript version of it that somebody wrote for Web Audio. So use that um, and uh, sort of, it's supposed to work with, uh, actually, I have one of these guys. It's supposed to work with another version of a, a chaos, uh, oh, not chaos pad, sorry, this is a Korg nanopad. So it's supposed to have a, supposed to use the, the, the pots. Um, so that's why you see these circles. They're supposed to represent pots. Unfortunately, I don't have that version. I have a pad version, so I can't map it straight up. But uh, if you have a, one of the pot, it works. You just plug it in, uh, and it just should just detect it and work automatically. But OSC. Uh, no, it's a, so it, you can definitely talk OSC over web sockets or anything that's, that, because it doesn't matter. Yeah. At that level, you're OK for it. But with, with MIDI, uh, there's this new sort of related standard to web audio called WebMIDI that lets you connect MIDI devices, physical hardware MIDI devices, to a browser and communicate with them. So that's how this should work. Uh, I'll try to find another application later maybe and we can try to see if this works. But I'll show you this one first. So this is a... So this is, a, again, completely synthesized. So it's a bunch of mathematical equations that uh, generate the sound. And uh, you get to change some things. So you can change uh, things like oh, this is. So change this. Wait, come on. Yeah, so some parts. It at some, at some of these parameters, it does get a bit wanky, uh, wacky, but it works out. The, the cool thing here is that you can, you can totally see, you know, with, with, without my really crappy music, like, you know, playing, you know, skills, you, this could be an instrument, right? Like, you could, you could totally play with this and you could even perform with this. So, from a performance perspective, from a ability to create music perspective, it works. Of course, musician in this case sucks. Um, but, but these are the kind of things you could do with web audio. So that's all I have, and I would now say go make some noise. <laughs> Wait, is there just another thing? Yes. Uh, with Web Audio, does this Doppler effect on, that you can play with online? Yes. Do you remember the name of the app? Daniel Rapp with Double P. Da How do you say? Daniel Rapp with Double P. And Doppler? Doppler. I think that's a super cool application. Yeah. This is really weird. This is totally not meant to be a musical application, but it was <laughs> super cool. Yeah, it's so it's supposed to let you uh, let you detect hand movement by emitting some audio from your from your laptop, and then seeing the reflection of that in the in the in the microphone. So you 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 send some sound out, and you listen to it on the microphone, and you hear it change because of a hand in front of it. So it's supposed to. Uh, let's see if it works. I don't know. I remember he had like a... Yeah, you have to click that. Yeah. Decrease the volume maybe a bit. Oh, yeah, that's, I, I need to use my, my loudspeakers, right? It doesn't work if it's... And decrease a little bit because it has this web when it's too loud here. So we can see the 20 kilohertz that no one hears on the right. Right. And you can see the Doppler effect on the right and the left of the Zoom version and then... <laughs> so if you go, try, try just to go to, uh, forward. No, sorry, towards... Ah, that's it. Yeah. 
Oh, just look towards nice. and, and away. I don't know where my. I don't know where. Oh, there. That's probably where it is. Go, go, go. I don't know where my loudspeaker is. It's probably here. <laughs> here. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you oh. do it nicely, you can see that. Yeah. Oh. You do the perfect in the nice. Nice. And you can play like um, theremin. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there one here? Yeah. So if you can. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. I better stop this. Can I stop? Yeah, keep, just stop? It, keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe this is better with. Total virtuoso. <laughs> okay, there's some weird shit. Anyway. Uh, if you want to play with any other stuff that I mention or the links to any of that, you can go to my website. This slide should be already there. And you can go through it and just look at any of the links and play with any other things. If you have any more questions about web audio, you can ask me now, or if, if we don't have time now, you can ask me anytime later, or you can tweet at me or whatever. I, I really love web audio and, and general all, all things audio, so I'm always willing to have a chat about anything cool that you want to try to do or you're playing with. So. Thanks. Any questions? Yes, no questions? I want to add that uh, the download link for all the stuff I show uh, is in the comment section. What was it? Again? The, 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 do you remember there? It's, uh, it's, uh, no, no, no. It's oh. Compasonic.com. Oh, yeah, there you go. I got it. Yeah, it was one. All right. If there's yeah, questions, questions. Otherwise, we can. If there's anybody wants to make any announcements or talk about anything that they're doing, how, all the stuff that uh, we and Jay talked talk about. How does it uh, tie into something like what Pandora does, where trying to identify a piece of uh, genres in music and trying to find out what someone's going to like and what someone's not going to. It's it's similar in certain scenarios. So one of the things I very briefly covered was this anal analysis part of web audio. So there's a uh, there's a it's a very so the whole part of web audio is it's real time, right? Like the entire idea is this is for making sound. Uh, but a lot of the analysis stuff that you can do in web like web audio or you can do with you know just simple code, uh, you can sort of expand to do much higher level analysis of you know, what kind of music it is, what kind of genre it is. So that you, can, you can run these algorithms that, that look at entire songs and say, okay, this song is in you know, this uh, scale, or you know, I look at these hundred songs and sort of get a vague idea of what genre they're in, or you, know, you can do stuff like machine learning. It's similar concept where you actually open up an audio file, look at individual samples, sort of process them together, do some mathematics on them, find some sort of uh, descriptors of them, uh, so you can uh, you can do things like Fourier transforms and uh, spec fine spectrums, fine substrums, and all these mathematical uh, operations to get uh, analytic metrics on them, and then feed them to machine learning, which is probably I'm guessing what Pandora does yeah. to guess what a genre of a song is. So it's I think it's a a step. This is like a small baby step in that way. But uh, there's a bunch of libraries as well if you want to play with this stuff um, uh, that work with web audio and also there's a bunch of offline libraries within Python and, and C++ that, that you do this where you give it a bunch of songs and say, you know, figure out what the genres are. So, so, so roughly speaking in a machine learning context, you say you, you use these kind of algorithms to generate the independent variables and you source the dependent variable from somewhere else and exactly. try to optimize. So there's already like there's tons of research uh, that's being done in this. Uh, they, they generally call it data mining for for audio. So they generally try to find some useful data from a bunch of audio files, uh, either with using tags, uh, meta tags, or by doing uh, audio analysis, uh, and then sort of use like feed that into uh, machine learning kind of stuff. And the, and the graph in the beginning where you showed about the browsers. 
Yes. Like, so the implementations are different. In, like there were boxes that were green and boxes that were red, but like then there's still differences between the implementations within the different. Uh, yes. So so the way uh, the web um, stuff works actually is um, W3C, which is the governing body that creates the spec for web uh, in general, uh, creates uh, a spec. So it says, uh, you should have, if you want to be compliant to Web Audio API, you should have an uh, audio buffer source node. And it should be able to do this. Exactly how they do it is different per browser. Uh, there are some really, really tiny uh, differences with respect to how you code things. Uh, but most of the time, it shouldn't bother you. So it is much, it's apparently, so I, I, I've, this is the only spec uh, that I've actually followed. Apparently, uh, spec work in browser is super uh, like aggressive and flame wars. There's like tons of fights everywhere. And, like this is Mozilla stuff, I'm not gonna do this. You know, Internet Explorer sucks, I'm not gonna do what they did. And uh, like all this kind of stuff. Thankfully, Web Audio is like some of the nicest uh, things that like, everybody sort of works together, agrees, most implementations, uh, are not trying to, like most browsers are not trying to fight with each other, they're trying to work together. In fact, many times they share code. So it works really well across browsers. So I've, I've rarely had problems with browsers not doing things that they're supposed to. Come on. Yeah, so I have one question. Yeah? Uh, is it technically just every year you hear a popular song on YouTube, let's say you analyze the popular songs of last 10 years, you know, find some patterns. And because there's machine learning, I think Google announced that they will compose. Magenta, was it Magenta? Yeah. Magenta, so Project Magenta, I think. Yeah, they're trying to get their machine learning stuff to, to analyze and learn about audio and music. Yeah. I think I think it can work. I think it will work. Uh, the the interesting thing though would be to define what is. Well, I, I, I'm guessing if you if you did, if you use popular songs, it probably could work. But musical taste is such a subjective thing. That it's going to be really hard to get something that many people like. So I'm not sure if it could work. I'm pretty sure somebody has tried this. I, I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure somebody has tried this. I mean, they have to, have to, have to have, because they yeah. Google released uh, the yeah. machine learned images, right? Yeah. So it's just building on top of that. Did it, did you, you have known about no, something? No, they've tried. They've tried a couple of times, but the problem is this particular genre. This is marketing more than just right. A piece of something yeah. that yeah. I don't know. It's it's once you get into this world, you start seeing how varied the, t the term music can be, and it's amazing. Yeah, I, I would be very surprised if they can predict that with any sort of accuracy. Yeah. Uh, reason being that if, if you look at, if, if you listen to all the songs from a given band, many of them sound exactly the same. Right? Uh, you listen to, say, The Cars. Almost all their songs sound the same, but then we have like two hits. Why are those hits? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's so much more than yeah, like marketing and so many other things that involve. Yeah. I mean, if you're saying that if you analyze all this and then make a song, and the question is whether it will be a hit, I think it's probably not going to be. A hit. You, can, you, can, you can create a song that has the potential to be likable. Yeah, yeah, possibly with some reasonable degree of accuracy. Yeah, but that's prob probably that's the best you could yeah. aim for. I'm guessing. I'm not sure. Maybe you can invite Max Martin and get him to share the formula. Yeah. <laughs> That, 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 that could be, or maybe like try to get his formula in a code in a library. <laughs> open source it, oh. solid it in. Oh. <laughs> All music will be open source. I know. <laughs> Anybody has any announcements or any sh uh, projects or anything that you want to share? That you want to it's not something I do, but I would share something. Do you, need a, do you need a website or something? Uh, can you go into no paper? Uh, just Google for, for no paper? It's not something I did, but I think it's pretty cool and it might be funny for some of you. Is this? No. Yeah, can you, you yeah. Know, open one of the spec we, spectrum we see there? This one? Yeah, maybe the second is simpler. So there's an app. You, you can visualize with your smartphone. It's free. Uh, you can visualize the spectrum and you just place it. Oh. 
Nice. Oh. Oh. Is this one? Yeah, so that's the fifth one. Can I uh, go back? Yeah, just go back to the picture. And, and the idea is super simple. It's just a, a kind of uh, piano partition. If you think about it, each of the the line is like if you were playing a, a, tone, a, note. a note on your on your piano. So you could create it with uh, well, with yeah. just a, a few oscillators every, every time. So basically, <laughs> you take a, a slice and you say, I need to generate a tone at this. This, 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 and so on. Maybe some of you can do it. I would love the music. <laughs> <laughs> How do you create this though? Is there it's, a just a, it's, just, it's a normal spectrum. No, but it's... it's a so basically you have... Uh, I, I looked at the specification. The specification, there's eight, it's like a piano roll. eight uh, octaves. Okay. Uh, so 12 semitones per octave, 96. Uh, 96 oscillator. But you, need, you can't generate it from an audio file, right? You need to generate you, you just generate it from an oscillator on your web. No, no, but how do you create the. Oh, yeah, you can. You can take a MIDI or. So it's, everything is on the, the website. Okay, this warm place that are you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That sounds so like a good. very weird website. So I I think I that's <laughs> a really good game. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna try this. If something yeah. weird happens, it's all it's all Cedric's fault. Yeah. No, it's I, know, I played with it on, on Linux. I think it works also on Mac, but let me know. Cool. It's probably not that hard to yeah. Yeah, look there's iOS, Android and uh, yeah. no Mac. But yeah, I think it's easy to do on web audio, no? Yeah, it should be quite straightforward. So you just take the picture, you just take a slice. And generate the sound at each of the frequency that. You oh, that's pretty cool. So you can even put back. Yeah, and, and if you cut down, you can also dis disform the thing. Uh, oh, nice. So see the, the weird shapes. So he, he doesn't care about that. He just nice. takes the slice. Okay. And so this is what it is. So maybe. You want to do it? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Alright. <laughs> well, it involves some. Yeah. Yeah, we need some image recognition. Yeah, we need some image people. Yeah. Okay, I know we can find her. Where we can find her. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Anybody else? Any 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 projects, any ideas, any things that you want to share? Also any feedbacks for soup? Uh, for what the meetup was, please, I'm, I'm just saying it on behalf of you, but please let it know. Uh, so we can change uh, the format and, and you know it's too deep, too shallow, what do you want to what do you want to Talk about what you want to hear about. Uh, I think it's it's nice to have an open community where we can all figure out what you want, what what we are all interested in together, and, and and have people share about it. And if anybody wants to share something, I guess for the next meetup, um, let Sub know as well. Yeah, so we're going to have it every month. Uh, so come on, friend. Uh, come on, friend. Um, anyway, if you want to try this, later, you can try the the meetup thing uh, the app was talking about. Um, so one of the things uh, that is really difficult for meetup organizers is to find speakers every month. Um, and uh, uh, like those of you who don't know me, I also run the iOS meetup um, in Singapore. And um, I've been running it for the last uh, four or five years, uh, I think. Um, so if no speaker uh, kind of comes up, uh, I was the one who's speaking all the time. and it. it it's not kind of really scalable, but uh, I learned a lot of things uh, while speaking, and I learned, you know, uh, it gives me visibility in the community as well. But I can't really do that for um, music tech <laughs> because I, I, I don't have the right um, kind of um, skill set for music tech in general. But um, uh, those of you who are interested to say in next meetups, um, just you know, feel free to uh, come up. Um, it's kind of a really nice place to kind of uh, know who are uh, the people in the music tech in Singapore and what you guys are really doing. Um, and I think um, there is a there is another event that is happening um, this week uh, at Google um, on Thursday, if I'm not wrong. Um, so uh, it is by like the mu the band lab guys are saying something. On Do you know the URLs? Uh, I see you on Facebook, right? Uh, so yeah, just go go and check check that out. Uh, and if you're no. free on, um, should I just search for your Facebook page or uh, was no, it? No, yes, I sent you a message. So oh, did I? Uh, oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, so. uh, but yeah, uh, um, the way it is going to work is I'm uh, planning to have it uh, on the third Monday of every month. So um, unless you know, um, 
it's a holiday. If it is a holiday, we have it uh, the week after. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh. no, it's like sound lab, oh, not really oh, band lab. So. Um, so yeah. it's a, it's more of a, a album launch. I can, I'll put this on the meetup.com page as well, so if you, mm. you guys can check it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I have a last thing. Maybe you will like it. <laughs> <laughs> this, this one is a, is a shameless like. <laughs> um, You're okay with me? Yeah. I should be able. So it's basically I used to be a DJ, so I like scratching vinyls, and I also now I'm an electronic engineer, so I've been trying to make them work together. So I basically made a, a little Arduino system. Arduino is a tiny microcontroller, a tiny electronic circuit that you can program with C or C++. And I made something that allows you to scratch using just a microcontroller and a hacked mouse, basically. So that was in a in a residency in a fab lab. Um, Sorry, I, I should have an account. What you don't have? I do. I do. <laughs> it's, just, it's, like it's just not luck. Uh, basically, we we were kind of challenged to recycle most of what we used. Uh, the artist plays with um, this kind of boxes that you can see all over, and he makes big sculptures. Uh, some of them are, you don't even see that it's using this kind of wood, like, yeah, like this one, whatever. Uh, but this one, I didn't prepare anything, I just, like, whatever. Uh, so this one is a, is a rotating object. It's uh, kind of an, an ancestor of cinema, so you have mirrors and little sculptures, and when you make it rotate fast, it looks like it's animated. It's called uh, Praxinoscope, and we sonified it, so we called it Praxi Sono, whatever. I don't even remember. <laughs> Praxinoscope, Praxi yeah, this one. <laughs> Praxiphonoscope. <laughs> uh, so basically, we used inside of the mouse. Uh, there's like the old school mouse with the balls. Uh, the ball is connected to some kind of system that we can see here, and it's rotating with little teeth. Tooth, and there's an optical sensor that can count the, the tooth when they are rotating. So it's, you know in which direction you go because there's actually two sensors and it's called quadrature encoding, whatever. So we, we reconstructed this little, uh, little disc with teeth inside and we just laser cut a much bigger one uh, in paper, placed it on wood to make it a bit more solid, and we placed it underneath a, a wheel of bicycle. So this is the, the sensor that we extracted from the mouse, <coughs> with just a, fly, uh, a cutter, hardcore cutting. Um, so we can see it from the inside. Uh, so it's looking like that, and the, the teeth are, are counted like that. And that's how we did the, the mirror thing. And so this is the first kind of working test. There is this library called Mozi, like a mosquito, M-O-Z-Z-I, -Z uh, for Arduino that allows you to generate sound. It's quite simple if you are familiar with uh, C and audio processing. Uh, all the code is also available here if you're interested. Uh, basically, we get the, the data from the sensor in, a, in an Arduino and the data that, that is measured, I, I graph it here, and I just apply a very simple smooth filter. So the, the dirty data, you know, here is, well, is the, the original measurement from the sensor, and then I just smooth it. And I use this sensor uh, measurement, which is basically uh, the rotation speed. I use this to control the speed and the direction of uh, playback of a sound. <laughs> So when, when the speed is constant, you have something flat, and this is the direction. That's it. 
So if you're interested in hacking some kind of things like that, uh, everything is on GitHub, it's documented here. Uh, oh, just come to talk to me. If you're interested. I mean, it's a it's a Linux machine, so it's as good as any other Linux machine. But is it slow or no? It's fine. Like this is something I remember um, a long time ago when I first started doing audio stuff. People would ask me like, "Oh, do you need like do you work with hardware? Do you do like you know crazy new like sound processing cards?" These days, with you know things that we have in our pocket, you can do really really fast audio processing without using much you know processor power. So you don't really need much power to do. Most of the audio processing, if you're doing some really crazy stuff, yes, you will need a little bit beefier computer. But most of the time it's fine. Any other announcements, guys? Uh, I started a company last year designing uh, noise canceling headphones. Uh, would love some input from some audio file at some point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, give a talk. Uh, yeah, talk, give a talk. Talk on how cancellation works. Okay. No. Sure. Not today, but <laughs> <laughs> Like a longer one? Yeah. Like basics of cancellation? Maybe? Yeah. Can do. Yeah. That's fine. You have one talk. Yeah. So the other thing about talks is one that I learned uh, while uh, organizing meetups is if you want to learn about something, volunteer to give a talk about that topic. And guaranteed in a month, you will you will have forced yourself to learn about it. So. <laughs> if you're interested in something, you want to learn, you want to try out something, it, it can be really simple stuff. It doesn't have to be really complicated. Don't worry. just. Come up, uh, volunteer to give a talk, and you by the end of the by the end of the month you'll be pretty good. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. This is the end of the meeting, but feel free to hang out and talk. To you.